In this episode, my final impressions after about eight to nine weeks of use of the Zoom F8. About six weeks ago, we did our initial impressions of the Zoom F8. At that point, I'd had it for about two weeks. Uh, Now I've had it for eight or nine weeks. And all the things that I said pretty much in the initial impressions still hold true. So rather than drag this out, (laughs) I'd like to encourage you, if you want some of those details, definitely go back and have a look at that episode. We cover a lot of the kind of the overall specs and my initial impressions of them. Again, all those impressions still hold Um, Just for the record, I love this recorder. It fits my style of shooting very well. I am not a location sound mixer. I uh, am a one-man band corporate video shooter. So I think that's an important distinction to make because this device, while it's awesome and I love it, it may not be for everybody. So let's dive in and talk a little bit more about that. One of the big things with the Zoom F8 is that there is an available iOS app that can run on iPad or iPhone. This gives you a mixing interface. The potentiometers that are on the unit itself are gain trim, not faders. So (laughs) if you want to actually mix, you need the iOS app. I talked, uh, from what I heard from Zoom, there is not currently a plan to create an Android version of this app. So that's, I think, important to know. That could change their mind. um, And they actually are very aggressive, I think, and very, I guess, progressive (laughs) in terms of developing new software for their products over time. So if there's enough user feedback, I I imagine they would consider doing that. Currently, there's only an iOS app. Uh, The things that I like about this is that you can enter metadata to some extent. So you can name the files, you can enter notes and things of that nature. But what you can't do is you can't name the individual tracks. So for example, if you're recording, say, eight channels, isolated channels plus a mix channel, stereo mix channel, so 10 channels overall, you can't actually give them names, which is a little bit frustrating. I think potentially that Zoom could change this in a firmware update, but at present, that's not a possibility. That's a little bit frustrating because it would be really nice, especially when you start getting you know, more than four channels. <laughs> that's a lot to keep track of. And once you get to post, you really want to rem- be able to remember very easily what each of them were. Also, what's kind of interesting about the way that the Zoom F8 records, it actually records the stereo mix, if you are recording that, in addition to the isolated tracks, those always come last. So those are going to be the last two tracks in the poly file, the WAV file. So that's a little bit different than some of the other pro gear out there. For example, the Zaxcom and the sound devices, I believe, both put the stereo mix track first. Is that a showstopper? It really depends on your workflow. If you're producing sound and then you're handing it off to post uh, to a separate group, you're going to have to explain that. That might be a little bit foreign to them and what they're used to. So definitely something to keep in mind. Hopefully, Zoom can make some changes to the metadata entry in the future. Also, along with metadata entry, as far as scene change, to do a scene change, you you simultaneously press the stop and the fast forward button. So that works okay. The The one downside is that there, as far as I can tell, there's no false take feature. That is, if you accidentally pro, you know, move, progress the scene forward and you actually need to go back and shoot something from the previous scene, you actually have to dive into the menus and fix that and go back into the folder that you need to continue recording to. So it's a little bit of a, it's, it's a, it's a little bit difficult. It'd be nice if they could add a false take feature. In terms of latency with the app, the app does really well with the faders. It, it's actually not sending the audio stream to the iOS device. It's just sending the meter levels and then all the controls that you can control here. So you have the gain trim, you have a pan, and then you have a linear fader in addition to the meters next to each one. Um, what I found, though, is that the faders are a little bit difficult to work with. In my experience, when I just touch any one of them, automatically it jumps by 4 dB down or up, depending on which way you're going. So it's not as if you can really finesse it, and maybe there are some things that Zoom could do to change that in in an update to the app. But right now it's a little bit fidgety and a little too jumpy to really sort of finesse when you're when you're writing those faders. So is it totally usable? Uh, if, if you were someone that was recording professionally and the mix track that you produce and deliver to post is critical, I think you're going to have a hard time using this as a very serious sort of mixer. But nevertheless, I 
definitely my hat's off to Zoom for, <laughs> for doing something like this. It's very, I think, innovative, and I think it's a nice first step. Um, but for really serious mixing, I think it's gonna need a little bit more work. One of the things that we talked about in a previous episode is that the limiters that are built in to the Zoom F8 are in the digital stage. And that is a potential problem from the standpoint that any sort of uh, input clipping could already have occurred in the analog stage, in the am analog preamplifier, before it even gets to the limiter. And so that's not an amazing thing. However, there are a couple of things that help that situation and make that not such a deal breaker, I guess, <laughs> at least for me. Number one, the dynamic range of the preamplifiers is quite impressive. It's specced at 120 dB, which is actually higher than most of the sound devices, mixers and recorders. And I think that in, in my experience and what I've seen so far, that really holds true. So there's one thing that gives you a little bit more headroom. You can pull back on the gain a little bit. The, cl the gain is very clean. I'm not finding a lot of noise uh, from the recorder itself. So that's one thing. The second thing is that it also has a safety track feature. So for, if you're, say for example, you're recording four tracks, you could also have four safety tracks, one for each, that records at a lower level. And based on the tests that I've done so far, it appears that that is happening at an analog level. So that means that it's actually recording that same signal to the other preamplifier in the actual analog preamplifier stage at a lower gain level. So you actually can prevent a lot of the clipping distortion that could come when suddenly one of your talent get very loud. So that's an awesome feature as well. So while the limiters themselves aren't awesome, there are a couple of things that the Zoom F8 have going for it that make that not so much of a showstopper. One of the things that I wasn't really prepared to talk about last time is a time code gener the time code generator that's built into the Zoom F8. I still can't really talk about that from firsthand experience. I don't have a camera that does time code. Um, so, I would definitely point you over to a test that was done by Gotham Sound in terms of accuracy. It turns out that they've essentially confirmed, and Zoom has also said, that the time code generator in the Zoom F8 is in fact a temperature compensated crystal oscillator. So what that means in practical terms, it's a mouthful, but what that means in practical terms is that even if at freezing temperatures, the time code generator in here still maintains its accuracy just as well as a sound device's 788T recorder. Again, no physical faders on the unit itself. These are gain trim potentiometers here. So you really have to rely on the app to do any sort of real mixing. But I think it's worth asking yourself how much mixing, how critical is mixing to your workflow overall? And it's important to understand for those that are new to audio recording for film that a mix is what you're doing essentially there is you're balancing out the individual tracks using faders so that the overall mix is something that can be used potentially if you're on a short turnaround it could be used as the the main production audio but it also could just be used as a placeholder for editing so typically for higher budget slower turnaround pieces they're going to go back to the isolated tracks anyway and faders don't affect what's being recorded to the isolated tracks they only affect what's being recorded to the stereo mix track so that's an important distinction to understand. So you need to really kind of look at your workflow and what's important to you. For me on my short corporate pieces, I'm almost always going to the isolated tracks anyway. So I'm not doing a lot of live mixing. So what that means is I pretty much set the gain trim at the start of a take and we just go with it. Um, I'm not doing a lot of mixing typically during the take itself because I'm also operating camera. So, you know, for, for situations like that, I think that you're gonna be fine and you're probably not gonna need to do a lot of mixing anyway, you're just gonna go back to the isolated tracks. Just as a quick review, the things that I really, really love about the Zoom F8 are the preamplifiers. They sound fantastic. And in my opinion, they sound very, very similar to the Sound Devices 744T that I've recorded with on several projects in the past. So definitely a high quality sound, plenty of gain, very clean in terms of self noise. Um, love the preamplifiers in the Zoom F8. Love that there are eight combo inputs, so you can do XLR or um, quarter inch, and that's gonna be plenty for me on any sort of gig that I have. Really, probably four would be enough for me, but <laughs> now we also have the ability to do the safety tracks, but lots of flexibility there. Love that there are dual SD cards that you can record different things to each card. That's fantastic as well. Build quality, again, top notch. Um, feels like aluminum to me, pretty much across the board. The jog dial is a tremendous step up from previous Zoom handy recorders. And again, I think it's gonna, hand, it's gonna stand up very nicely. The LCD screen is super easy to read. 
um, especially one thing I was concerned about was outdoors. I'm finding that outdoors, it does just fine. There's also a monochrome mode that you can switch to for outdoors, which makes it even higher contrast, which makes it even easier to see outdoors. But I just left it in the regular color mode at 60 out of 100 brightness, and I can see just fine outdoors. So the screen really works nicely. The peak meters also are very helpful. They have plenty of segments to make it very easy to see exactly where you're at in terms of your peak levels. Uh, there's nothing more infuriating to me than having those devices that have like five segment or four segment peak meters. Those are almost useless and very difficult to sort of gauge where your audio is. Uh, on the F8, of course, on the screen, they have the very large segment. I don't even know how many segments this is, but it's, it's definitely plenty to work with. And they also have just as a little bonus, again, not that I would necessarily use these to measure or to, to gauge my input levels, um, but they also do have the, I don't know, what are they, six segment um, meters for each channel. So you can see which is which. It's, that's kind of a handy feature as well. Again, love the powering options. I have the high rose input for my Anton Bauer gold mount batteries, which can again power the unit for over 20 hours. So probably two full production days, which is really nice. You also, of course, have the included AC adapter, which plugs in the back here, and the caddy that will hold eight AA rechargeables. The AA rechargeables, I think this is an important point. As I mentioned before, you're not exactly getting a huge amount of time out of those. I think with, depending on how many mics you're phantom powering, I think you could realistically expect between two and a half to four hours. So it's not through the roof. <laughs> it's not amazing. Um, but I really kind of view the, the, uh, the double A's as a backup source in my particular case. You can also use this as an audio interface, as we mentioned before, through USB. I did do some tests with that. I, I don't find it really helpful in terms of... Um, driving monitors like studio monitors out of this because you don't really have a way to control the output level from the device itself unless you somehow rigged something up where you came out of the headphone jack and and did something there but just directly out of the with the main outs the left and right outs there's not really a way to control the output levels um, with any sort of volume control so i don't really find it useful for that but in terms of just recording to your computer and monitoring with headphones not a problem at all i think it works just fine I did that on a Mac. It's class compliant on a Mac, which means you don't need any special drivers. You just plug it in and go. So who is this device really for? I think it's really a fantastic device for someone who is not necessarily a dedicated location sound mixer. <laughs> I think those people, there are some critical features that just aren't quite there yet. Um, could Zoom do some things in terms of firmware updates to get it there? I don't know. That's going to depend on the individual mixer. But for me, uh, for smaller crews, where you typically won't have a dedicated sound person, or if you do have a dedicated sound person, they're not, it's not going to be critical to your particular piece to have a perfectly mixed stereo track um, to go along with the isolated tracks. I think the Zoom F8 is a fantastic device. I have absolutely no regrets spending my own $1,000 on this device. I'd do it again. Uh, really happy with it overall. And go ahead and leave me any questions you have down below. There's so many things to talk about here, and we can't we can't do a 40 minute episode really. So go ahead and leave any questions you have. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that and be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.